And first this morning, civilians living under siege as Russian forces step up assaults on major Ukrainian population centers after disregarding a planned ceasefire that was intended to evacuate people safely. Here's President Zelensky on the danger his citizens face. You cut the Ukrainian civilians off electricity, water supply, heating. You leave the people without food. You leave us without medicines. You shoot the routes which could be used for evacuation. There is no weapon left that you wouldn't deploy against us, against the free citizens of Ukraine. We have nothing to lose but our own freedom, besides our own dignity. This is our greatest treasure. More than 350 civilians have been killed since this war began, though that number is expected to be much higher. Joining me right now is the former president of Ukraine from 2014 until 2019. Petro Poroshenko is on the ground in Kyiv, where citizens are bracing for another night of attacks. Mr. President, thanks very much for being here with us. It is 5 p.m. right now in Ukraine. What can you tell us as far as what you're seeing on the ground? Situation is extremely difficult. Fortunately, the, we have a disastrous humanitarian situation in uh, main uh, cities. In Mariupol, we have uh, uh, dozens and dozens of killed civilians. Uh, with uh, Kharkiv, with Chernigov, with the, uh, many others. But around the Kiev, today we are evacuated. Uh, today, yesterday, day before yesterday, all together on the, our battalion evacuate more than two and a half thousand uh, people from the Irpin, Bucha, Vorzel, and uh, a lot of dead people right on the street. In Irpin, they have an artillery fire on the Orthodox Cathedral, and inside the, the cathedral was the people who wait in evacuation, who waiting for our battalion. And unfortunately, also, we have uh, lots of casualties among the civilians. Uh, with this situation, Putin make a war crime. Uh, we definitely proud with the uh, brave Ukrainian soldiers and with the unity of Ukrainian people uh, who demonstrate and ruin all this scenario of Putin. First, he won to capture Ukraine in 48 hours. Then in 72 hours, but today is the 11th day of our fighting, and uh, more than 10,000 Russian soldiers are killed in Ukraine during this uh, mad uh, invasion. And we just demonstrate that the Putin is not just an aggressor, Putin is the war criminal, Putin make uh, crimes against humanity, and the whole world now will see that the picture of Ukrainian cities from Bucha, Vorzel, Irpen to the Chernigov and Kharkiv and Mariupol are much worse than in Aleppo. Can you imagine that this happening in the center of Europe in the uh, 20, 21st century? And with this situation, absolutely, this is the genocide against Ukrainian people. We are the only scene okay. of Ukrainian yep. nation. It's just the fact that we want to be free, we want to be democratic, and we hate the idea to restore the Soviet Union second yes. edition. Well, Mr. President, the free world is watching the courage on display by you and your colleagues, and certainly President Zelensky. Tell us what Ukraine needs right now. We are going to be speaking with two congressmen coming up who have been working on a plan to get you air power from Poland. Tell us specifically what Ukraine needs right now to fight this aggression. Thank you very much indeed for this question. This is extremely important. We uh, should keep Ukrainian airspace uh, above Ukrainian soil. With that situation, definitely we need the uh, military jet to cover the nuclear power station because the nuclear contamination do not see the borders. And uh, Article 5 of the Washington Treaty do not protect the Western world from the disastrous Putin madness. Uh, we need to, our fighters to cover the civilians. And 72 fighters, which is now is in Poland, is in Slovak Republic, in, in, is in Germany. We urgently, this is the question on ours, and every single hour of the delay, this is the hundreds of Ukrainians killed. Uh, our pilot is one of the best pilots in the world, and the, already uh, almost 100 uh, military jets and uh, helicopters of Russian armed forces are already hated. 
And I doubt that anybody can imagine that army, which I am proud as a commander in chief of Ukrainian armed forces in the year 2014, 2019, create these uh, uh, armed forces. And they are so powerful. And uh, point number two yes. is the uh, attacking drones. Uh, we have it in Baryakhtar uh, from Turkey. They are extremely efficient. Please combine it with all NATO member states. Supply it to us. Point number three, this is the javelin and low and other anti-tank uh, rocket launcher because we have more than 1,500 Russian tanks and armed personal vehicles. And this is impossible that Ukrainian soldiers with their light automatic guns goes against tank. This is extremely efficient uh, weapons. We definitely need it. And with that situation, I think that the anti-missile uh, uh, complex yeah. uh, and anti-aircraft, including Stinger, this is also urgently needed. Please, we need it. Yes. Thousand thousands to protect not only Ukrainian soil. We protect in here uh, the Europe security and global security at the end of the day. And next, it would be sanction. If Putin do not, first of all, I want to thank uh, the United States for their leading role, President Biden, administration, Congress. Yeah. This is extremely important what we have from you, but every single day it should be new sanction. I want to thank you for the uh, sanction of the Visa, MasterCard, American Express, because all the Russians should yes. understand if they support Putin in killing Ukraine, this is the, uh, their responsibility, because Putin are fighting not against just Ukraine. As was by my answer, if you asked me before 24th of February, now he fighting against humanity, against collective West, yes. and we should be united to fight against him. Mr. President, the Ukrainians and the Russians are supposed to be talking again. These talks have yielded nothing in the last uh, 11 days. What are you expecting the result will be uh, from these talks, which are expected tomorrow? Uh, first of all, this is the third round of negotiation, and I have a very big experience for negotiation with Putin, and I have a several recommendations. Point number one, please don't trust Putin. Putin promised me many times ceasefire, uh, releasing of the hostages, uh, withdrawal of the Russian troops from Ukraine. He never, never keep their promises. And point number two, please don't be afraid of Putin, because uh, just you, see, you should look at Ukraine now and Putin go as far as we allow them to go. That's why we should be united and strong. And point number three, I am uh, definitely I prefer the diplomatic uh, solution. And definitely there is no any nation in the world who wants the peace more than we, Ukrainian. But yes, I think right. that if uh, we want to have the results, this is, shouldn't be result tete a tete. This is the weak Ukrainian position. And we need to be a united world together with a representative European Union, for example, France and Germany and with the participation of United States. This is yes. just to demonstrate the unity and demonstrate the efficiency of the uh, negotiation. Definitely, I keep my fingers crossed, and I hope maybe it would be a miracle when they have reached some, um, but I, I'm not very much optimistic with this situation. M Mr. President, finally, let me ask you, you were president from two, uh, 2014 to 2019. You saw Vladimir Putin invade Crimea so many years ago. Now some lawmakers are saying that his mental capacity is declining. Is this the same Putin that invaded Crimea? What can you tell us based on your experience with Crimea? First of all, uh, the Putin invading Crimea before my presidency. During my presidency, he invaded in Donbass, and I am proud. <laughs>
लहुरत वरवा रात सपना देखाया पिया हमका रात सपना दे 